Okay, uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Joseph. Uh, so we sort of uh, talk about the upcoming features uh, in our tooling, so I'll try to give you like a, a, a dive into the, the tooling uh, that we have developed uh, for low code integration. So uh, before I uh, get into the details, let me give a quick background uh, about myself. So, so basically, uh, I got into uh, developer tooling uh, like seven years ago uh, when we started the Ballerina project. Uh, so Ballerina project uh, we uh, was developed to uh, the language that was developed to uh, make writing integration easy. So uh, from the start we knew uh, we knew that unless you have like proper tooling, it will be really hard to uh, uh, write code uh, with Ballerina. So, so a team of us uh, uh, at that time uh, started to uh, look into uh, implement uh, tooling uh, for Ballerina. So at that time, we uh, look at the, the editors in the market and there were like a lot uh, back then. So this is the time uh, where you find Atom was the most popular editor and then the VS Code was coming up and there were like Idea and Eclipse uh, on the other side. So, so we, we look at the market and uh, we were wondering like how to support all these editors. Uh, and then uh, we found out uh, something unique about VS Code. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, back then if you want to uh, implement language support, uh, you have to uh, write uh, the logic in different frameworks provided by each editor. But uh, VS Code uh, did it a bit differently they introduced this uh, concept of uh, language server. So basically the idea is uh, you can implement the language server with whatever technology you have, want, and then as long as you follow the protocol, the, the VS Code can connect to that and give you the language intelligence. So because of that, uh, we went down the VS Code path and then uh, uh, implement our own language server uh, for Ballerina. Uh, and the other thing uh, that was attractive about VS Code was they had this uh, web view uh, concept introduced. So basically what that means is you can uh, render any diagram uh, in that uh, web view. Uh, so this, this was again uh, interesting for us uh, because as you know, uh, Ballerina is a textual and a graphical language, so we wanted to render the uh, sequence diagram uh, in the edit itself. So after, uh, uh, after putting effort, so we managed to uh, build the Ballerina VS Code plugin. So what you see here is a screenshot of that. So basically, uh, this uh, has the Ballerina language server built in, and also it has uh, this uh, web view uh, where we can render the Ballerina code uh, in a, a graphical manner. So that was our uh, first uh, plugin uh, in VS Code. Uh, coming to the future, uh, now we maintain a bunch of uh, VS Code plugins uh, uh, of our various uh, uh, products. Uh, so basically we build these to uh, improve the uh, development experience. And uh, this is the latest addition uh, to our list, uh, basically micro-integrated VS Code plugin. So the idea behind this was uh, we want to uh, like rethink uh, how to do uh, low-code integration. So we didn't want to just support the exi uh, existing uh, uh, enterprise uh, studio uh, work uh, to VS Code. So we, we were like reimagining uh, how can we uh, write low-code integration better. So without uh, going through more slides, so let me do a quick demo so you can get a feel like what the experience is like uh, with the new extension that we have developed. So basically, uh, I have opened the VS Code here. Uh, if I go to the extension view, you can see uh, I have installed the micro-integrator. So this is still a preview 
release, uh, and it's up there in the marketplace, so you can download that and install. So once you install the extension, uh, you would see this uh, micro-integrator activity appearing uh, on the activity bar. So basically, you can click that. So once you click that, uh, it will take you to uh, uh, a different perspective uh, uh, targeted for like low-code development. So since we haven't opened any project, uh, it will give you the uh, welcome message. So basically, the, the if you're writing a new integration, the starting point would be like uh, creating a new project. So let me do that. So I'll name the project as Joker, and then uh, select a place to uh, save the project and create. So once you create the project, uh, it'll automatically open that in a new window. Uh, and since we don't have any artifact uh, created in the project already, it will uh, straight away uh, uh, give you the adapt artifact wizard. And on the left-hand side, it will give the project overview. So these are the, the artifact types uh, we are sup supporting in the uh, current version. So we'll be adding the missing stuff uh, going forward. And as you can see, we don't have any artifacts here. So in the artifact wizard, so we have like two options to create artifacts. So you can either describe uh, with AI uh, and generate the artifacts, or else you can use the, the traditional wizards uh, to uh, get the artifacts created. So let me uh, use the AI generation. Uh, so let's create a service uh, that, will, uh, that can return a joke. So let me add the prompt. So I'll say create an API called Joker. Uh, resource. And then I, I can give uh, uh, further details as well. Uh, which so let's say I want to call a backend and then uh, return the joke uh, that is written from that backend. So I'll give the prompt test. Uh, I'll give the, the direct URL itself uh, of the backend. So let's see what it's generating. So once you hit generate, it'll open up the my copilot uh, window and uh, it'll uh, do the generation. Okay, so, so it has uh, created uh, a joke API, so let me add that. So once you click add, uh, it will uh, add the API uh, to the project and it will automatically take me uh, to the service design view. So as you can see, it has created a resource called random. So let's uh, open that up. And it has already had the integration uh, inside it. So it, in this case, it has uh, defined an inline uh, HTTP endpoint. So here, uh, the, the, the AI feature we develop, it's not just like a one-time generation. You can use it to keep on uh, editing the sequence. So let's uh, try that out. So let me uh, ask it to log the, the response uh, uh, after calling the backend. So let's see uh, what it does. Okay, so, so basically it creates a new configuration, so let me add that. So then basically it's at the uh, log mediator uh, after calling the backend. 
So also, like if you want to add mediators, uh, again, you can use the mediator palette. So in this case, uh, if you try to add after respond, it wouldn't show you any mediators. So here, uh, you can have a, uh, you can search through the mediators and uh, add to the sequence. Also, if you want, uh, you can search through connectors and uh, add to the sequence. Okay, so, so we have uh, implemented a ba basic uh, uh, scenario. So let's see uh, how to run this uh, in the editor. So here uh, we have uh, running and debugging already integrated uh, to the VS Code. So let's uh, try that out. So once I hit run, basically it will locate uh, a local installed uh, uh, MI uh, integrator runtime and then uh, basically build this particular project and open it up. So let's uh, quickly try this out. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it works and it returns uh, the response. Okay, so, so let me uh, also show uh, how the debugging works. So let me add a debug point. So let's try that out. So as you can see, uh, you can do the debugging in both, basically, either in the textual mode or in the graphical mode. OK. OK, so let me uh, show you a, one more feature that we have developed, which is the, the new data mapper. So data transformation is a, a, a common thing that you do uh, when doing integration. So let's see how that experience is like. So basically from the palette, uh, you can select the data mapper. And here, let me give a, create a new configuration for the data mapper. And then uh, set the input type as JSON and the output type as JSON. Let, let me try that again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, ba basically this is just a name. Uh, so let me uh, open the data mapping view. Okay. So once you are in the data mapping view, uh, basically you can uh, give the input and the output schema. So let me uh, do that. So here, what I'll do, uh, what I'll, I'm doing is basically I have a file uh, which has a sample of the response that I uh, get from the back end. So let me import that. And then uh, basically uh, I give a sample of the output uh, that I want to uh, transform to. Okay, so, so once you are in the data mapper, so I have defined the input and the output, so I can do the data mapping now. So let's uh, try to combine these two lines, uh, setup and punch line. Okay, so, so I have completed the data mapping part, so let's go back to the sequence. So let's uh, try to run this and see. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, so as you can see, uh, the backend response uh, will be transformed to the output that we want. Okay, so so that's uh, so I guess you understood like uh, how the experience is like uh, with the the new tooling. Let me uh, uh, go through the key improvements uh, that we have made uh, in the new tooling. So the the first. Uh, Major change is uh, we uh, created a more simple project structure. So if you're already using microintegrator, uh, you might have come across like different project types uh, you want to create uh, based on the integration scenario. So the, the new project structure uh, can handle all of those scenarios. So it's fairly easy to learn. Uh, if you're like a new uh, developer for my, and basically, uh, this can even house uh, like the class mediators as well. So, so once you uh, create the project, uh, when you want to deploy, you can build the project. So the, this particular project is a Maven module. So once you build the project, it will uh, create a uh, self-containing artifact where you can go and deploy in the runtime. Uh, there's a small catch, though. Uh, let's say if you are if you are an existing uh, MI user and if you have existing MI projects, uh, so basically you have uh, two options. Uh, either you can migrate the old project uh, into the new project structure, so the migration tool is already built in to the VS Code. It's a matter of uh, selecting the directory and giving a place to migrate. Uh, so basically, the migration is uh, basically a, a, a rearrangement of the existing files. So even the JIT uh, history will be preserved after migration. So once you do the migration, you will get all the features uh, of the extension. Uh, but let's say if you don't want to do the migration and if, if you're only tweaking uh, small portions of your integration, so basically you can still use the, the VS Code extension uh, to edit those, edit files in the low code view. So what you are missing out will be the artifact creation. So if you are creating new artifacts, uh, then you have to do it manually uh, without any tooling support. Uh, so the next uh, uh, key feature, like Isuru mentioned, is the AI assistant that we had developed. So basically, once you download the extension, uh, uh, it, if you are trying out the AI, uh, in the initial run, it will prompt you with a, a sign-in screen. So basically, it requires you to uh, go to the uh, micro uh, integrate AI service uh, and create an account. Uh, so once you create an account, uh, you will have a, a quota, a free quota. You can try it out uh, to try, try out the AI features. So once... Uh, so uh, when, when we are planning to release the GA, we are planning to add support to uh, give your own open AI key so that you can uh, continue to uh, use this AI feature. So the, the, the free quota that we provide uh, is given so that you can try it out without giving any open AI keys and get a feel uh, for these AI features. But uh, for day-to-day -day development, uh, we encourage you to give your own open AI key and uh, use that. So the next uh, key feature is the new Synapse language server that we have included in the extension. So basically all the graphical features are driven uh, by that language server. Uh, but also since it's a language server, you can uh, automatically get all the the rich language support in the textual mode as well. For example, completion, diagnostic, code definition, all those features uh, you, will, you can use in the text when you edit the, uh, the XML files as well. And also we have like a plan to uh, keep on improving the language server capabilities. Like some things we can bring in like refactoring, like if you want to rename a certain artifact across uh, multiple files so that can be supported uh, via the language server. So the next uh, main difference is the, the new uh, diagram we have introduced. So we have uh, followed 
a flow chart based diagram uh, and it grows vertically so it's uh, easy to scroll through and uh, read through. So the idea here is uh, to improve it so that uh, you can, uh, just by going through the diagram, you can uh, read out the logic rather than opening each mediator and trying to see uh, uh, what's been done in there. We are not there yet, but uh, we'll be uh, continuing to improve the diagram. And also if you compare to the previous diagram we have, uh, we have like more controllers in the diagram uh, itself. For example, uh, if you want to add a new case to the switch statement, the plus buttons uh, are in the diagram itself, so you don't have to open uh, different forms and add cases. So it's uh, more intuitive uh, compared to the previous. So again, the next uh, major improvement is the integrated connector store. So in the, in the current one, if you want to add a connector, you have to go to, the, go to a different site and download the connectors and copy to the project uh, particular place. But in this case, uh, everything is integrated. You just have to click, uh, select what you want to use and the download and copying will be done automatically uh, by the editor. So the, finally, let me uh, uh, talk a bit about the new data mapper. So basically, this is a complete uh, rewrite uh, uh, from the existing one. Uh, and uh, here, so you have the ability to visually uh, do the mapping. And what we generate uh, underneath is a, uh, all the mapping will be serialized into a TypeScript file. So here, what you see here is the TypeScript file generated for this particular mapping. So the input and the output schemas will be uh, encoded in uh, TypeScript interfaces, and the mapping logic will be uh, encoded in a TypeScript uh, function. So the advantage here is like if you want, you can go ahead and edit the TypeScript, TypeScript file itself and it will automatically update the diagram uh, based on the mapping. So it'll, if you are a developer, it will be uh, more easy to work with. So uh, that's it for the main features, but we, there are like a lot of uh, additional features uh, that is in the tool. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, do try it out. Uh, we have the developer preview and give your feedback. Uh, so we can improve it. And uh, finally, the GA release uh, we are planning to uh, do by end of Q2. Uh, 